thousand miles from El Paso to the border of Louisiana, a thousand miles from the Gulf along the winding colorful waters of the Rio Grande, from Mexico to the Panhandle, Texas. Across this vast empire moved first the shaggy buffalo and then cattle in great herds, raiding red men and marauding white men. And later, as the 19th century was nearing its end, the settlers who had established themselves in this frontier wilderness were beset by desperados and outlaws. And it was in order to make life safe, to ensure prosperity and progress, that early in the American occupation of Texas, an organization known as the Texas Rangers was formed. Throughout their history, the Rangers have been men of exceptional character, unyielding courage, rare physical endurance, hard riding, fast shooting. Their service was to a state they loved. For an ideal, they were willing to give up their lives, and gladly. To the Texas Rangers, this picture is dedicated. Come on, donkeys! <laughs> Wahoo! Get up there, did you? Wahoo! Pull up your hands. Throw down that express box. All right, get down. Open the door. Get out peaceably, folks. The gentleman will keep their hands up. Sort of, yes. You with a hat. Bring me that express box. Don't do it, son. Don't do what? Hold up this coach. Now, this isn't a hold up. We're just resting our horses. Pass your hat. This is for charity, folks. We want money and jewelry. It's a vile outrage. It's a shame. These people have paid their fares. They're entitled to my protection. Shut up. I haven't killed a stagecoach driver in a long time. Tell the witnesses, folks. I'm doing this again my will. Oh, yes. More passport. Put it in. Oh, dear. Oh, please. Snap it up, blubber puss. Warm you up with some hot lead. This is an heirloom. All right, keep it. Oh, thank you. Now take that watch instead. Ah, oh, listen, mister. My grandpa gave me this watch on his deathbed. And I told him I'd never part with it. You're parting with it now. Uh. All right, get back in line. Everybody face the coach. Keep him in the air. All right, amigo. Chakra <laughs> Colera. The dirty, David Robin, lion, sons of coyotes. So they'll rob my stagecoach, huh? I'll show them. Killing's too good for them. But I'll get them. I'll get them if it's the last thing I ever do on this earth. I'll shoot them on sight quicker than I shoot a rattlesnake. The dirty, lying, thieving buzzards. I lived upon the square. I never had any pocket change. And I thought that hardly fair. But out upon the highway, I went to rob and steal, <laughs> and when I met a stagecoach, oh, how happy I did feel, how happy I did feel. <laughs> boom, 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 <laughs> Oh, boy, what voices. <laughs> <laughs> ah, grandfather's turn up. Give hey, it up. Uh, and there's your collection plate, Deacon. Ah. Uh. Look, Jim, I'm very easy to get along with, but you're going too far. Now, these two, I don't mind. But look, today, he tried to put a permanent part in my head. <laughs> now, listen, will you cut it out? <laughs> sure, you want to be more careful, Jim. You're liable to kill Wahoo. Then we have to break in a new man. <laughs> <laughs> I like to miss him close. It's good practice. Yeah, I get a lot of sympathy here, don't I? I got a mind to save this one for Maria. Say, I'd give everything here right now just to have that little enchilada sitting in my lap tonight. Looking at me with those big brown eyes and running her fingers through my hair, saying, Mi dulcito pepecito. <laughs> well, I'm keeping this little trinket for that same Maria. Who, you? Of course, I, uh, I've never seen her yet, but uh, then she's never seen me either. Huh. Well, I got something here. She never seen me neither. How far is it, Sam? Oh, just across to Arkansas, skip a two down Texas toward the Rio Grande. Rio Grande? Too far. I tell you, you boys go down and meet the enchilada. I'll take all the money. Wait here till you get... Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> well, I don't know, but no. Where are you? Come on. Put up your hands. We've got some surrounding. Don't 
try nothing funny. You ain't got a chance. They'll hang us short. Let's take a chance and run for it. Hold it on, boys! I can't make it. I'm getting shots better than hanging. All around us. They'll be scared of hitting each other, Jim. Make a run for the horses when I douse the fire. Let him out of boys! They're making a break for him! Go let him get away! There goes one of them! Get him! Go get him! Bring me now on the lone prairie. Listen, how do you expect to find Sam down in this country? Texas. Pooey! No towns, no ranch houses, no gals, no nothing. Ha! We ain't seen a jackrabbit in two days. Boy, you can't tell me we're still in the United States. We'll find Sam if I have to shove you down every prairie dog hole in Texas. He always swore he'd go back to his Maria. Maria. We've talked to 60 Marias. Every Mexican gal's name is Maria. But none of them know Sam McGee. <laughs> well, it's dear, senorita. We are the good friends of Sam McGee. Have you seen him? Do you know him? No, senor. I do not know of this man you call Sam McGee. But I have a cousin, Maria Teresa, who lives in Casablanca. She is very pretty. Maybe she know him because she likes the Americanos. Si, senor. Gracio, senorita. And will you tell us how far it is to Casablanca? Oh, senor, it is not far. Oh, about a hundred miles. Maybe 200 miles. That's all. <laughs> That's all. 200 miles. She didn't tell us that her cousin Marie Teresa and Casablanca was married and had six kids, did she? No. How much money we got left? Don't oh, be foolish. You saw me spend that last cartwheel at the bar? Well, seems like we ought to go to work. Now you're talking sense. When my friends can come and bury me, they bury me not on the lone prairie where rattlesnakes. <laughs> The middle mule show is running fools, ain't he? Takes a good strong man to hold him. Yes, sir. <laughs> Been driving long? Practically all my life, practically. Texas? Texas, Missouri, Kansas. <laughs> to me, stages is stages. Woo! Get up that fancy. Ever been shot at? Some why? You might be hell up today. What makes you think that? We ought to know. Who's we? Rangers. Rangers? What's them? You ain't been in Texas long, so you ain't heard of the Texas Rangers. Oh, somebody's fooling you, neighbor. Ain't nobody gonna hold up this coach today. They'd be crazy if they did. <laughs> Come on, get up there, Gabe. Comes real trouble. I shoot first and ask questions afterwards. You mean that? You ain't got nothing to worry about. You just keep hold them lines. Still and all, ain't no use shooting a kill if you can help it, is there? Oh, uh, we'll see. Oh! All right, folks, you get out and stretch your legs if you want to. Thank Stranger, always got room for one more passenger. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Daffy? Get up on that seat and be ready to throw down that express box. Who, me? <laughs> no, sir, the only time I was ever late, one of my mules threw a shoe. <laughs> Don't start nothing now. Get in that stagecoach and sit tight. I'll explain to you later. You'll explain nothing. Get up on that seat. That man up there riding with me. Hey, driver, you've watered those mules long enough. Let's get moving. Yes, sir, yes, sir. We're going to get going right away. Yes, sir. 
I'll have you in Junction City in no time at all, my friend. No time at all. Come right in here. All aboard, folks. Hey, wait a minute. I ain't riding in this shoebox. Three dollars and sixty cents. Right to the penny. <laughs> get in. Get in. Come on, boys, get going. What a day. What a day, neighbor. <laughs> Just to be alive. You know, I feel so good, I think I'll sing a song. Would you like to hear me sing? I don't care for music myself. Well, it's your loss, my friend. <laughs> I think I'll sing anyway. Oh, I can't play my banjo with Susanna on my knee. Come on there, Jasper. Leave the gentleman's gun be. Mustn't touch things like that. Grab your hands! That's what I was trying to tell you. Texas Rangers. Texas Rangers, huh? That's a sample of the way they work. I'm gonna stay clear of them. They got no sense of humor. I make a motion we adjourn to the nearest saloon and talk over this little episode at length. I second the motion. And therefore, as a member of the Ranger Force of the state of Texas, I do solemnly swear to make the peace and to preserve law and order. Make the, make peace, the peace and preserve and law and order. order. To the best of my ability. To the, the best, best of my ability. All of this to the end that the state of Texas may be a safe place in which to live. All, All this, this to the end, the end that the state, state of, Texas of Texas may be a safe place in which to live. Safe place which to live. So help me God. Well? So help me God. So help me God. Say it right here. We don't ask too many questions when a man joins the Rangers. Courage, a good head, and a better aim. That's about all that's required. Those men died with their boots on. Not for the small wage they received, but for an ideal. The determination to make this state a civilized place in which to live. And so, Hawkins, Jones, you enter into a service which holds a fine heritage. If you're worth two hoops in Hades, it'll bring it out of you. If you're not, it'll bring that out too. Fair enough. Oh, here's some regulations you boys better be looking over. That's all, boys. Hi, Ranger. He doesn't know it yet, but he's got a couple of star borders for the rest of his life, the old buzzard. <laughs> Look, Hard Ed, there's a lot more to this job than 40 bucks a month in Chuck. A lot more. You tell me, I'm all ears. I can't tell you just yet, I gotta figure it out first. But listen, there ain't a game in this world that wasn't made to be beat, if you're dealing the cards. All right, my proud beauty, when you get around to it, deal me in, will you? In the meantime, I think I'll take these little rules and regulations and put them right next to my heart. Don't have to worry, you son. Rangers are instructed to return all stolen cattle to their rightful owner. And the ranger is assigned to protect the shipment of gold. Need a stage to show how happy I would feel. How happy I would feel. Oh, how happy I would feel. Hey, boy, what little sow better than them beans? I'm kind of hungry today. <laughs> to make Texas a safe place to live in.
What's the matter, Ranger? What are you so happy about? Hey, Walrus, did you ever see this one? Faint low, catch it with a backhand. Never misses. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, boy. A hammock. Say, I think I'll take me a nap. Call me when dinner's ready, friend. In my time, you had to be a man to join the Rangers. Hey, anybody home? Just want to use the hammock. Rules and regulations. I never had no pocket chain. I hope that hardly failed. Way up on the highway, I met a stage coach time. Hey, flavor. You know, man. Get your horses. We're going out. Who, me? Yes. Both of you. Where are you going? We ain't up yet. Never mind that. Mount your horses. Guys in here for five minutes and he wants to go out riding. He's been riding for days. Oh, the big mallet head. What's to become a ranger? You certainly get some great ideas. Texas Rangers. Hooey! Oh, you're still a little punchy from bouncing around in those state coaches. Mm -hmm. Major figures that the rustlers will try to cross the river between Del Rio on the north and Eagle Pass on the south. Johnson. Yes, Father. Right. Coming. You'll take the north cut to Del Rio. Introduce yourselves to Marshal Bill Green. Right. Adams. We suspect the Hamilton Land and Cattle Company. Pick up all the information possible. Right, Captain. Peters. Yes, Lee. Yeah. Dixon. Yes. Stake the country between Comado and Pendle Creek. We will, Bob. Yes, sir. Hawkins and Jones, you'll patrol the river from Camaro south, a distance of 20 miles. Yes, sir. Rodriguez, oh. come with me. We oui, ain't, Capitan. Hey. Pop your hat, I want to get in a couple of wing shots. Well, if you're on hand, I'm not going to get sunstroke for you. I don't know why they sent you along anyway. I can handle all them rustlers myself. Ha! I'll nail more rustlers than you. Bet you two bits. I'll take that bet. You want to pay me now? I wouldn't pay you if I had it two bits. If I shot right hey, take it easy. Want to stampede them cows? I don't want to fool them. Now, I got a better idea. I'll uh, circle them and come in on the other side, and you go down and hit them off at the river. Wait a minute. That ain't such a good idea. You're in the back of them. I'm down front where they can shoot at me. Oh, no. All right, I'll hit them off, and you circle them. All right. Wait a minute. Why should anyone want to hit them off? Them fellas got a right to make a living, too, ain't they? Yeah, I guess that's right. My pappy always told me to love your neighbor and... Right now, I'm the friendliest man in the world. That's right. What is a pretty spot here, ain't it? Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Hurry up! We haven't got all day here. Yeah! Ah! <laughs> 
Hey, Liz, can't you two colludes be glad to see a guy without breaking his neck? No. Oh, oh, Wait a minute, Walt. <laughs> Sam, don't tell me you're in charge of those deers. Why, sure. I... Hey, that reminds me. i got to get them across the river. Come on, give me a hand. Sure, we'll give you a hand. Hoy hace frío unos calzones, como los que usa el ranchero. Se los comienzo de lana, se los acabo de cuero. Ay, chico, What'd I tell you? Ain't she everything I told you she was? Ah, uh, you're just crazy about your little Sammy. Ain't you, darling? Hmm? <laughs> well, Sam, I guess you're the head man of this outfit. More power to you. Thanks. Listen. We can get a thousand head together in no time. Why, this country is crawling with cattle. What do you say? What's the matter? In a three-way split fair? You tell them. Tell me what. Well, it's this way, Sam. We couldn't help it, honestly, we couldn't. See, we were broke. Yeah, and hungry. I haven't spent so much time looking for you. Oh, wait a minute, I'll tell them. Sam, you're gazing at two of the finest ranges in the state. Not Texas Rangers. Two of the best. <laughs> no fooling, law and order, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> My friend! <laughs> Rangers! <laughs> Listen, Sam, we'll quit whatever you say to word. We'll quit right now. You quit and I'll shoot your teeth out. Amigo, I got it. You're crazy. I'm way ahead of you. Protection Plus. Sure, you give me the information. I do it. There's not a chance for a slip-up. Like spearing fish in a barrel. You can't miss. You get one every time. I don't know. We're all drinking the same stuff here, but I don't feel it. Allow me to tell no. my fine feather friend. Let me do no, it. No, I beg of you, let me. Wait a minute. Maybe the stuff hasn't had a chance to sink in yet. Look, you're a ranger, ain't you? I don't know. You got me so daffy. I don't know what state I'm in. Well, you are a ranger. And we three are going to work together just like in the old days. Oh, I get it. Me and him is going to tip you off. Our uh, house don't need to fall on you. You catch on quick. When a stage carries gold... And big cattle men. Don't forget those railroad payrolls. And gold shipments in and out of the oh, state. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I know. You rangers get the inside on everything. You can get the dates, amounts, if and when they're protected. I think we would have got something here. All you got to do is sit tightly here from us. Right. Salute. Salute. To the beginning of a profitable career. This is what I'll say to the Major. Major, I'll say, well, we ain't seen hiding a hair of them there rustlers. Why, thunder and blazes, we ain't even seen a cow. Of course, we want to be good, honest rangers. But the first shot out of the box, you go and pull a dishonest trick on us and send us out looking for rustlers and cows what ain't. Now, is that fair, Major, I ask you? <laughs> <laughs> you think you'll swallow that? Uh, he'll be apologizing to both of us. Yeah. <laughs> On the plan. Come on, one. What's the matter? They said in Tennessee, Texas was the land of opportunity, a safe place to raise a family. But I reckon we come too early. Marthy didn't want to come, said it was foolish. But I reckon different. I should have listened to her. 
I should have come a little later. Savage. Still rules the plains. Mama, don't die. Paul, Paul, don't leave me like this. Here, come on, come on. Let me alone. Let come me on, talk to him. Please. Let me go. Let me go. Lord said, I am the resurrection and the life. And it seems like he also said something like that. Whoever believes in him, even if he is dead, will still live. And that whoever lives and believes in him will never die. And that... Amen. Where's your nearest kin? Where I'm the bee. Got no others. No friends, no ways? Only some folks back in Tennessee Ma used to speak about. What are we going to do with them? I'm going with you, Rangers. And shoot all the engines I can lay eyes on. Oh, we ain't got no time traps around the country with a sawed-off, sniffing little rut like you. I ain't sniffing and ain't sawed off. I'm going with you, Rangers. Well, all right, we'll take you a little ways, but... But listen here, the first chance we get, we're going to unload you. Thanks, Ranger. You too, partner. Uh, you're all right, son. I can whistle Yankee Doodle, I can hum Mother McCree, but I can't play my banjo with Susanna on my knee. I thought that I would make a hit when I played William Tell, but when I beat my feet in time, she had a dizzy spell. Oh, I'd like to drop her on the floor, but that ain't chivalry, but I can't play my banjo with Susanna on my knee. Whoa, Jim! What? That woman over the Major's house, look what she done to me. She cut off my fingernails, said they look like bear claws, and that ain't all. No? No, she's teaching me how to read and write. I have to study every day, I have to brush my teeth and wash my hands. Now she says she's gonna cut my hair, and I ain't gonna let her do it. What's more, you fellas are gonna protect me. I've heard enough. No, so we ain't gonna stand by and see that woman make a sissy out of you. Come on, Davey. You tell that spirit of cleanliness a few things, and if you don't like it, well, you can pack your dust and move out. and wash your face and brush your hair for supper. Go on. That's her. Did you want to see my father? Uh, no, I want to see you. Well, here I am. Well, uh, Davy's been telling us that uh, he's not awful happy here. Well, we turned the boy over to the major. We thought... You thought what? Well, we... Well, we... Well, that business about making Davy brush his teeth every day, that, uh, guess that's all right, but... Uh... Oh, yeah, it's, it's not a woman's place to be cutting a man's hair. It makes about a sissy. You see, miss, we got our ideas about bringing up a boy. Well, if you think of brushing Davy's teeth every morning, and combing his hair, and washing his face, and seeing that he gets an education, you're gonna make a sissy out of it. I pity you both for your amazing ignorance. Ignorant? Who's ignorant? I can read and write. That's probably all you can do. Listen, lady, we're going to settle this thing about Davy once and for all. I think I know more about a boy's welfare and education than either of you will ever learn. Now, there's no reason for discussing Davy any further. He's staying here with us, and that's all there is to it. Now, go on upstairs, Davy. That's what you say. Is that so? Well, we'll see about that. If you wasn't a woman, I... Oh, fudge. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Hawkins. Hello, John. Oh, Major. Hello, darling. Hello. 
Now, I think it would be nice if you'd ask the gentleman to stay to supper. Well, well yes, we're having a baked Virginia ham, black-eyed peas, hot biscuits, homemade apple butter, and sweet potato pie. Well, sure. Uh, it's mighty kind of you, miss, but... Uh... Well, no, but it's about it. You will stay. It smells mighty fine, that ham does. <laughs> you don't stand and help us eat it, we'll have ham for a week. Well, thanks again, but uh, we haven't quartered our horses yet. Oh, you've got plenty of time for that. Don't coax them, Father. They want to stay, they will stay. And if they don't want to, well... Oh, but that's good ham. Go on upstairs there and wash your face. And I won't see you running around here with them dirty fingernail no more either. You understand? Go on. I might have noted. That ain't all. You got a lot of studying to do too, you understand? Mr. Hawkins, you forgot your hat. Thanks. Meow. What a long tail our cat's got. You sure know how to make yourself unpopular, don't you? Would you mind telling me now why you traded ham for beans? Couldn't you see what was back of that invitation? Yeah, good eating. I've stayed clear of her kind this long and I'm satisfied. Her kind? What's the matter with her kind? Oh, she's the home building, settling down for life kind. Once a gal like her gets her apron strings around a man, that's his finish. Just the same, she's a right smart looking little gal. Once your birthday, I'll make you a present of her. I still don't know why we didn't stay for supper. I see where Colonel Drake collected himself 18,000 gold for them longhorns he sold in Mexico yesterday. Yeah, I trailed along with him most of the way, just to kind of keep the banditos from stopping him. I tell you, there's too much money coming into Texas all of a sudden, it's going to cause trouble. Who's the major sending with a paymaster for the new railroad they're building? Well, I drawed that job last night. Don't know there's a major stepping us on them juicy deals. I'm leaving this afternoon. What's up, Neil? That new bank at San Angelo is shipping a lot of gold to Fort Worth. They asked for a man to go the whole way, just to act as chaperone. Next assignment we've got, we'll prove to the Major that we're the best rangers this camp has ever seen. That'll make him sit up and take notice. Excuse me, Dad. When Jim and Wahoo go on trips, can I go along with them? Can I? We'll talk about that later, son. Father, it's a telegram from the Attorney General at Austin. The operator said it looks mighty important. Anything serious? I thought the Indian trouble had been settled once and for all. Apparently, it's to break out again. Men. The Indian troubles have broken out again. They're on the warpath. Murder. Depredation. We've got to subdue them. Put them on the reservation for good. I know what is in all your minds. The odds against every ranger company will be 50 to 1. But if Texas is to be a state, if families are to build homes, if there's to be any future for our people, the sacrifice of lives will be worth it. I expect every man to be saddled and ready to move out in half an hour. Yes, yes sir. The other one must be that railroad paymaster. Well, I mean, sure sure as dirty fighters, ain't they? What'd you expect? There's no picnic going on. Get those shovels, men.
We've got about five seconds. It's our only chance. Rush him. I think you can make it if you crawl along the cliff in back of you. Thanks, Major. This will do. At least until we catch our breath. <laughs> How about admitting I'm a better shot than you? I admit nothing. I apologize. The drinks are on me. I accept your apology. And the drink. Thanks. Boys. Ranger Company C is about 30 miles south. If we can hold out here until night, I see no reason why we can't. One of us can go for help. See, si, amigo. Let me have a chore on the backer. Nothing doing, Hank. You owe me three plugs already. I told you I'd pay you back the minute we got to camp. You cross your heart? Cross my heart and spit. All right. That's four plugs you owe me. I'll remember. I'm going to bring Bob and them other fellas up here. They got Hank. Pobre amigo. It sure is funny to what length some fellas will go to keep from paying their debts, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. Say something about being safe? Nobody but an Indian could think that up. Nice. 
I say. They pay you off with peanuts. Gotta get out of here alive, I'm finished. Ah, uh, quit belly again. You've seen everything. Yeah, I ain't done everything. Rodriguez! I go to get them, amigos. Adios! Madre mía. Adiós. I never was a finer man. Look, we might be smashed to pieces. Every man stay where he is. Let me go after him, Major. You married Frank, you got children. Let me go. Oh, what are you talking about? You got a wife in Dallas too, ain't you? Well, I got no offspring following me around. Yeah, you don't see no blind squaw sitting on my lap, neither. Stay here, I'll be back. Well, you think I'm going to a dance?
Maybe I'll say a prayer if I knowed one. Sun stays up late this time of year. That's our bad luck. <laughs> Now that we've placed the Indians on the reservation for good, the people can look to real progress. A state marching forward to its rightful destiny. But there's one stumbling block. Trouble from our own citizens. As soon as a community becomes rich, a town important, corruption springs up. Thieving cattle barons, organized gangs of cutthroats, crooked judges, sheriffs, district attorneys. Take this section here. Kimball, Mason, Sutton. They should be the most prosperous in the state, instead of which they're the most corrupt. Of them all, Kimball is the most flagrant example. What's more, it's ruled by one man who grafts on everybody. He could commit murder and get away with it. Clean up Kimball, and you throw fear into every other county. Major, I'd like the honor of tackling that job. I'd already made up my mind to give it to you and uh, Gillis. Well, if you don't mind, I'd uh, kind of like to handle it myself. You see, I got some ideas of my own. That is, if it's all right with you, Jack. Well, you're biting off a pretty big chaw, but I reckon... You're Thanks, Jack. Not... Well, Major, what about it? <laughs> Seems to be all settled. But no gunplay, unless it's absolutely necessary. Here are some Kimball County reports you can be looking over. Thanks. Weren't you afraid for him when he started up the canyon wall? Nah, he was in the softest spot of all. I had him covered all the time. He didn't have a thing to be worried about. <laughs> Between me and you, I was the real hero. Why didn't you go all the way with Jim? Well, I wanted to, but the, that dang foot stopped me. It would have stopped anybody. If it wasn't for Jim, you and the Major wouldn't be here, would you? The way you talk, you think Jim whipped that bunch of Indians all by himself. I was in there. I never shot so fast in my life. My Indians was dropping around me like rotten apples. <laughs> there ain't many rangers like Jim or the Warhol. No, I guess. Saints, you got some arithmetic to do? Oh, hello, baby. Hiya, Kirkle. Hello, Jim. We were just talking about you. That's all you ever talk about. I thought you was coming early. Say, uh, baby, do me a favor, will you? Sure thing. Turn Baldy loose in the pasture and see he gets plenty of grass. You bet. I'm expecting Sam. When? About sundown. What for? What do you think? To talk a little business. Yeah? Yeah, that Indian fight did the trick. We're aces with the major now, and I picked a sweet job, plenty sweet. I'm off single-handed on one of the biggest assignments the Rangers have had in a long time. Say, what's eating you? Come on, out with it. Well, listen, Jim, you know I ain't getting mushy. You know me better than that. But we haven't had things so bad here. They, they like us. We're among right people. Real friends for the first time. We've had a good time together here, haven't we, Jim? Oh, we've always had a good time, no matter where we've been. That's not what I mean. I'm thinking of Rodriguez when he climbed that cliff, knowing that he's going to get killed. Wasn't that one of the finest things you ever saw in your life? Yeah, I guess he had what it takes, all right. Poor old Hank, begging me for a chore to back him. I bet he's up in heaven right now, spitting down on them Indians. 
Captain Stafford, Neil Evans. Ah, oh, they were fighting fools, too. You know, you never heard me talk like this before, Jim. Say, what are you trying to do? Break me down? Well, you make me sick. You turn my stomach with that cheap sentiment. What's being a ranger ever going to get you? If you're not shot by the time you're 50, you end up without a nickel. Well, I want all I can get while I can enjoy it. Me and Sam's going to get it. It's a two-way ticket from now on, and I'm dealing you on. So long, Pudgy. Hello, Mandy. Hello. How do, Miss Bailey? I didn't know you were here. I was just leaving. Just leaving? Seems you're always just leaving. What are you afraid of, the measles? I had them when I was a child. <laughs> I had them, too. Well, I guess I better be going. Must you? Yeah, I got to. Goodbye. Uh Nice fellow, that Jim. Why doesn't he like me? Don't fool yourself, he does. He's got a funny way of showing it. You know what we just talked about? Mm-mm. He's talking about you. No. When we was looking for engines, he did nothing but talk about you all the time. Wow, well, you're joking. Tell me what he said about me. Oh, he, uh... Talked about your hair, yeah. and the color of your eyes, and the, the way you walk and your talk and stuff like that. Well, he likes everything about you. Oh, you sure could have fooled me. Well, he's a very shy fellow, you know. He probably lived to be a hundred years old. Not even mention it to you. Really? And oh, another thing he told me. What? That if he ever settled down, it would be with a girl just like you. Oh. Well, what am I supposed to do? Sit and yearn? Not if you're the kind of girl I think you are. Oh, it's mighty sweet of you telling me all that, Wahoo. Oh, shucks, ain't nothing. I don't mind helping out a friend, especially a fellow can't talk for himself. <laughs> Here, drink your buttermilk. Sweet. fight half the Indians in the state to sell myself to Major Bailey and get this job. But it's going to mean money to us. Plenty and quick. Ah, you're talking. Kimball County's the richest spot in the state, and one hombre runs it. He collects tribute from every saloon and gambling game. He's got men rustling horses and cattle. Sounds like a good businessman. Yeah, he's got a hand in everything. Legitimate and otherwise, mostly otherwise. And he gets away with it? What about the law? Law? He's the law. He's had the good citizens buffalo for a long time, but... Some of them finally screwed up enough nerve to ask the rangers for help. Well, if he's the law, then where do you come in? I'm the law, too. You get it? Sure, I get it. It's a very pretty picture. First you kick this fella out, then I step right into his boots. <laughs> Sam, you've got a very understanding brain. For larceny. I found out early in life that the honest dollar is the hardest one to make. <laughs> it's a pleasure working with you, Sam. You expect any shooting? Oh, there's liable to be a little justifiable homicide. Wouldn't it all be very legal, like? How big's your outfit? And as many more as I want. Adios, amigo. Adios. Oh, hello, Major. Here's your expense money. If you make good time riding tonight, you'll be able to catch the train at Bixby at 8 tomorrow morning. I'll make it all right. Best of luck. Thanks. Thanks. 
I guess that's about all. Oh, oh no, here. Thanks. Jim. What's the matter with me? I don't know. How's anything the matter with you? Well, do you think I'm pretty? Yeah, I guess a man would call you pretty. Well, Jim, why don't you tell it to me instead of going around telling other people? What are you talking about? So you like my eyes. I bet you don't even know the color of them. Well, right now, I'd say they're a little greenish. Oh, and my hair. And the way I walk and talk. You like everything about me, don't you? Answer me! Oh, Jim, why don't you face the truth like me? What truth? That we love each other. Oh, that's nonsense. It's not. It's beautiful, our love. The way it happened. It's all the more beautiful because we didn't go after it. Jim, it just happened. Oh, say, don't you believe in love? No. But you do love me. No. But don't you know I love you? No. Do you? Jim, I do. I do, and I mean every word I said. You made me say it. Oh, Jim. Oh, come along and live with me, and I will take good care of thee. Deedle dee beetle bee beetle bo bo. <laughs> well, so long, partner. Good luck. I'll need it. Do me a favor, will you? Sure. Brush those things off my back. I don't see nothing. That's funny. I had a feeling apron strings were squeezing the life out of me. Well, I'll be glad to get out in the wide open spaces again. So long. So long. How do you do, gentlemen? I'm Jim Hawkins, Ranger Company D. I'm Tom Price. Glad to know you, sir. Glad to know you. Where's the rest of your men? I'm all there is. They take it only one? There's only one fight, ain't there? That's, That's right. right. Well, let's get started. Hello, Jim. Hello. Hey, yeah. I want you to meet Mr. Hawkins. Mr. Twitchell's our district attorney. Welcome to Kimball County. Thank you. What can I do for you? I got a murder warrant here for uh, Jess Higgins. <coughs> <coughs> Say that again. I said Jess Higgins. <coughs> you must have heard of him. <coughs> yes, yes. Jess Higgins, yes. Very big man. <coughs> Known him all my life. Ain't I, Jake? <coughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. Well, <coughs> who issued this warrant? <coughs> the sheriff here at the request of the Texas Rangers. <coughs> uh -huh. Well, was this a blanket warrant or... Any particular killing? It's for the murder of the Hartford brothers. Uh -huh. And I want the case heard this afternoon. Oh, th th that's impossible. I can't prosecute a case like that on a minute's notice. Nobody's asking <coughs> you to do it in a minute. You got a whole hour. Uh-huh. My dear Twitchell, may I presume on your hospitality to the extent of three fingers of rye? I've had atrocious luck at the hands of Lady Fortune. Never saw so many small cards in my life. Why, certainly, Judge. I want you to meet Mr. Hawkins of the Texas Rangers, Judge Snow. It's a pleasure, sir. I do. If you're looking for justice, you sure come to the right place. <laughs> Hawkins here holds a murder warrant for Jess Higgins. You... Hey, what you give me? I asked for a riot, not coal oil. We're holding court in an hour, Judge. You're officiating on the bench. Why, why, yeah, of course. I, I, I'm mighty proud to do so, but courthouse been abandoned. Used for storehouse for years. Fact is, it's full of green hides right now. I might add, uh, Mr. Higgins' hide. So? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's the matter with this place? This ought to make a good courthouse. Judge, your bench will be right there, back at the bar. There? We'll bust the roulette table around and the jury can sit there. The prosecution can sit at the stud table there and the defense back there. And where do I sit? Here you got a warrant for my arrest. You Higgins? Let's have it. 
Brought my lawyer along to see if everything comes off legal like. You don't mind, do you? No, the more the merrier. You know, I've never been in court before. Ought to be kind of interesting. Yeah, it ought to. Let's have a drink on that. You bet. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Sure. You too, Ranger. No, I gotta go dig up one first class witness. <laughs> Casper Johnson, now it has come to my attention that you publicly stated that you saw Higgins here enter into the delivery table on the afternoon in question. Now, is that so? Now, Dave, that ain't fair to put me on the spot like this. Your Honor, I insist you make the witness stop beating around the bush. Oh, he's a little bit confused, but he's doing the best he can. Yes or no, Casper? Well, I was up in the loft, and I thought, you can't see good from there, and, uh, and I had a fork full of hay at the time. Well, never mind but that. Did you or did you not see Higgins go into the livery stable? Well, it's nearly a year ago. And I, uh, my memory ain't so good anymore. My wife said to me only yesterday, she says, Casper. <laughs> Burger. Now look here, Casper. Burger's a pretty serious business. Unless you can state positively that Higgins is the man that entered the livery stable and shot the Hartford boys, you better get down off that stand. That's a good idea, Judge. Uh, I shouldn't have come here in the first place. Uh, far be it from me to convict an innocent man. So uh, if you don't mind, I'll just uh, toddle along. Just a minute, Judge. I want to ask the witness a couple of questions. This is most irregular. Who, who can do that? Who says I can't? Get up there. Now, Casper, I'm advising you to tell the truth. Because if you don't, your address from now on is going to be the state prison up in Huntsville. I promise you that. Now answer direct, yes or no. You saw the defendant, Jess Higgins, shoot and kill Dick Harker, didn't you? Well... Come on, you did, didn't you? I nearly thought that... Yes! Yes. Say, who's running this court? I am from now on, sit down. Then Fred Hartford came in the stable and the defendant, Higgins, shot and killed him, didn't he? Well, um, in Didn't a, he? In a way... Yes! Yes. That's all, Casper, thanks. The court has heard all the witnesses it needs to hear. Right. You can sum up your case, Mr. Twitchell. Gentlemen, it's up to you to bring in a verdict. A just verdict. Conviction. Now, if Mr. Higgins is guilty, he should be punished. But no one but Casper Johnson saw the shootings. Now, we have here the rather incoherent story of a man who affirms, then denies, then affirms that he saw the killings. In fact, it seems to me he shouldn't be a witness at all. Therefore, we don't want to hang or send to jail an innocent man. So you must weigh the evidence very carefully. <clears throat> there is only one verdict, gentlemen, and you know it as well as I do. So forget what the prosecuting attorney just said. I object to that. Sit down and shut up. There's only one way to clean up a county like Kimball. Get rid of men like Higgins for good. If you don't respect your own courts of law, you'll never get rid of lawlessness. You, you all came to Texas to better yourselves and to make homes. You want peace and law and order, don't you? Sure. Well, all right, the Rangers can make arrests, but when a man is guilty, it's up to you to send him to jail. Are you cowards? Are you afraid to say what you think? Or are you citizens of a great state? Wait a minute, Ranger. You're not running this town. I am. Just a minute. Don't reach for that gun, Ranger. Move over, Jess. I want to hit him right between the eyes. Back your chair. Keep an eye on him, Chef. Sit down, Jess. Thanks, stranger. You know, I can't understand men that have such little regard for law and order. As judge and coroner both Kimball County, I find that these worthless skunks come to their untimely end through their own willful negligence. Just a little slow on the trigger. <laughs> All right, let's proceed. Order! Jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, sir, we have. And we find a defendant 
Guilty. Does that mean that I have to go to jail? Uh, uh, don't worry, don't worry. Yes, Higgins, stand up. I sentence you to 20, uh, 50 years at hard labor at Huntsville Prison. Court closed. 50 years? <laughs> Thank you, my boy. Thank you. You had a grand chance to snuff out Higgins there. Why didn't you do it? It's better the way it happened. I didn't want to do any shooting. <laughs> when I take over the county, I'll show them what a piker Higgins was. I'll take everything away from these worthy citizens but their IT. <laughs> Sam, I want you to do something for me. We're calling the whole deal off. The what? The deal's off. <laughs> You're joking. You're going your way and I'm going mine. You're not going to do business in Kimball County. You're leaving it the way I'm leaving. <laughs> Jim, you a Bill. Sometimes I think I know you and then I can maybe know. I don't know what's happened to me since I come down here. I guess maybe it's kind of like when a fella gets religion, even when he don't want it. Well, I don't know what it's all about, but... If that's the way you feel, it's good enough for me. Thanks, Sam. Ranger Hawkins doing single-handed, but we all were afraid to do it. There he is now. Mr. Hawkins, you brought law and order to Kimball County for the first time. And we as citizens have kind of made a little pool and bought the Hartford Brothers Ranch to give to you as a token of appreciation. Yippee! Well, gentlemen, it was mighty nice of all of you. If I ever do settle down, I wouldn't want a better place in Kimball County. Well, that's mine. Such men as you. Yes, sir. Well, boys, I guess the drink's around me. Yeah. Oh, hey, boy, give me the door. Well, Jim, let's drink to our own finish. May we never meet again. Oh, I'll keep out of your way, Jim. Success. And good luck. Gang robs First National Bank at which it all falls. Escapes of $18,000. Outlaw gang believed to be led by notorious polka dot bandit terrorizes citizens of Concho County after stealing money, cattle, and horses. Daring train robberies in last month and a bandit gang close to $40,000. Sheriffs of 20 counties pursue notorious polka dot. Citizen stage running battle with bandit after daylight robbery of Wells Fargo Express office, in which agent and two bystanders are killed. All law enforcement officers in southwest Texas are warned to be on the lookout for polka dot bandit who is trying to take the law into his own hands. This man is a dangerous character. Don't take any chances with him. When did you first convince yourself that I was the only girl in the world? The day you made me kiss you? Made you? I had to fight to get away from you. I was scared to death. Yeah, I bet. Well, I was a little scared. Jim, what are we going to do about it? Well, I haven't figured it out yet. Do you uh, think I'll make a pretty bride? Well, I haven't asked you yet. Yes, but if you did ask me, and I did answer yes, 
and we did get married. Now, mind you, I'm just supposing. Where would we live? Well, we couldn't live much any place on forty dollars a month, but I got my eye on a ranch that. Oh, Mr. Hawkins, that's just what I was thinking. Where? Have you got one? Yeah, it's in Kimball County. That's the best grazing land in the state. Here. See, it's 18 miles north of somewhere, and, and it runs five miles down here along this wrinkle here. And, uh, oh, anyway, it's a lot of land. Oh. But aren't you afraid of apron strings? Well, I uh, used to be afraid of the boogeyman when I was a kid. And you're not afraid anymore? Look. Goodbye. Goodbye. Will I see you tonight? You will unless I break my arms, my legs, and my neck. Major Bailey. What's it now, Major? Another Kimball County? No, that job of yours did the trick. This is something else. A real manhunt. I leave the whole thing up to you. Handle it any way you see fit. Sounds big. It is big. The man's the one whom all the newspapers of the state are calling polka dot. We're out to get him. One sensational crime after another. He's making laughing stocks out of all of us. You're to bring him in, dead or alive. Didn't recognize anything like this. You'd better explain that. I'd rather not take the job, Major. Why not? Well, I, uh... I've been working pretty hard. So has this outlaw. Yeah, I know, but I've sort of been hoping for a vacation. I... Never mind that now. We'll talk about that after you clean up this job. You'll start in the morning. That's an order. Take four men. You can pick them yourself. I'll have to resign, Major. I'm sorry to hear you say that, Hawkins. You've been getting along pretty well lately. You're about first in line for promotion. Here's the resignation form. Sign it. Dixon. Hawkins. You're under arrest. What for? Polka dot bandits and Sam McGee are one and the same. Not so long ago, you were outlaws together. You were and you still are pals. You're not hiding anything from me, Hawkins. How long have you known this? It came when you were in Kimball County. I don't mind telling you, it was hard for me to believe it. This was to have been your real test, bringing in Sam McGee. I hoped you'd come through. I'm sorry, sir. So am I. Let's go, Frank. Hello, Davy. I said hello. Oh, look what I got for you. Some licorice.
say I oil up my gun. Sure works good. Won't try it? What's the matter with you? Nothing. Oh, thinking about Jim, huh? Supposing I am. Say, Jim ain't a scared of that polka dot. None of the rangers around here are. I know I ain't. I was wondering. Well, I ain't. Seems if you was a good ranger, the major would have given you the job. Sent three or four other fellas, but he didn't send you. Is that so? Is that so? Well, it ain't gonna do him no good because he ain't gonna find him, see? It's gonna take brains to fire out that polka dot. Yes, sir, brains. <laughs> I'll bet you I could find him. I'm from Missouri, Wahoo. Say, Davy, suppose I went out and got the polka dot and brought him back in here. Would you be proud of me? You know I would. Everybody'd be proud of you. Why, you'd be the biggest ranger of them all. Even bigger than Jim was. That settles it. Honest? Honest engine. When you going? You going to take me along with you, ain't you? Thank you. Don't be daffy. It's bad enough to be going without the major's orders. Well, when they find out I'm missing around here, well, things will be popping. They won't miss me either till it's too late. Oh, what are you talking about? I take you along and you slow me down. Besides, that polka dot there is a pretty tough hombre. I got to figure out a way to bring him in. Maybe you'd better not go. What are you talking about? I'm one of the finest trigger men in this country. Besides, this has got to be between me and you. You understand? Man to man, huh? Man to man. Shake. Be a good boy now. Awful careful, aren't you, Wahoo? What do you mean, son? Well. <laughs> don't you worry, none. Nothing's going to happen to old Wahoo, and you know that, don't you? Be a good boy. Stick up your hand. <laughs> gotcha, eh? Yep. So long, baby. can play like me, but I can't play my banjo with Susanna on my knee. I can whistle Yankee Doodle. Hey, woo Holy horse cars! You! What are you doing here? I've been following you all day. You have, huh? Well, turn around and get home as fast as that nag will take you. I am not. Now listen, Davey, I told you this is a man's job. I'm a man. You said man to man. Besides, if you got in a tight spot, I could go for hell. Ah, don't worry about me, and I ain't gonna get in no tight spots either. Now turn around and get home as fast as you can, you understand me? Go on, get out of here. Get out of here, scat! I mean it, I said get out of here! Oh, all right. If you want to send a message, you wouldn't have anybody to send it with, unless you took me along. Maybe so, but I'd have a tougher time explaining what you was doing with me. Well, you can say you saved me from the engines. Ah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, but you don't have to tell them that, do you? <laughs> Davey, come here. Dad blast your little hide. You know, you really got a head on your shoulders. Someday you're going to be a big lawyer, I betcha. Then can I go? Can I, Wahoo? Put your gas and let's go. But don't fall off now. Let's go! Perfectly there. <laughs> Come on, boy. But I can't play my banjo with Susanna on my knee. Six of clubs. That's all I needed. <laughs> you beat it. Yeah, I beat it. <laughs> you know, that makes me sore. That's something I've never been able to do. Ah, Sam, I gotta hand it to you for getting along so well. Simply because I got nerve, imagination, and a steady hand. <laughs> Don't I know it. Wow. Well, what? I wouldn't be a bit surprised if people was writing books about me 20 years from now. 20 years from now? Listen, you're famous already. Well, you can't pick up a newspaper you don't see something in there about you. Nah. Yeah. You think I'm fooling? Stay here, I'll show you. Take 
this note to the telegraph operator in town and tell him to send it to Major Bailey right away. You understand that? I got you. And hurry back here as fast as you can. Now, be careful. Don't worry about me, Wahoo. All right, kid. Be careful now. Momento, my friend, where do you go? Let go my horse. Oh, no, it's not so good to be in such a hurry, muchacho. Let go. Let go of me, I'll kill you. I don't think you can kill anybody for a couple of years yet. Take it easy, buddy, you'll never get hurt. Give me that, that's mine. Don't let me get away. <laughs> Listen to this one, Sam. Express office in Cedar Crossing, Raw. Polka dot bandit and gang accused of executing robbery. Cedar Crossing? That's news to me. I ain't been near Cedar Crossing since I was 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> That's one you missed, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, see un momento. Try to leave camp. Take this piece of paper from him. What does it not say? I'm important. Take care of young Paul Revere. Si, si, no. What do the cards say, Wahoo? Huh? Oh, <laughs> listen, that's a lot of horse hair about telling fortunes with cards. No, no, that's where you're wrong. I can do it. You can? Sure, watch me. Jack of Hearts. That's a romantic young fella. Ah, King of Diamonds. Maybe the Jack thought that he could beat the King, huh? Oh, oh, the old polka dot himself, the ace of spades. That means trouble for somebody. Whose fortune are you telling, yours or mine? There's an old Mexican saying, Bien sabe. And it means, who knows? And <laughs> hey, what'd you come up here for anyway, Wahoo? Why come up and take you to... Oh, sure, sure, I remember. You wanted me to help you get Jim out of the Who's God, didn't you? That's right. Uh-huh. You sure that uh, you didn't want the boys and me to change places with Jim? <laughs> Looks like you got me, Sam. But I'll lay my cards on the table. I'll shoot straight. So will I. <laughs> Looks like you and Jim will have to break in a new man now.
That looks like Wahoo. Ed. Trouble, Neil. Here's a note. This is what I think of the Rangers. Better keep out of my way or I'll kill the kid. P.S. Jim, I'm sending a Wahoo back so that you can give him a first-class funeral. Sorry, I can't attend in person. Sam. That's the rottenest thing I ever saw. Rotten? It's called blood and murder. Elliot, Russell, Nate! You three start turn up for not passing. Get in touch with the sheriff there. Go out of the way, sir. I give you free reign. Only get it. Major. Major Bailey. Get him. Right here, Major. You three go to Captain Stafford. Stafford. Right. Yes, Major. I think if you'll strike south through Concho County. Major Bailey. What is it, Hawkins? You've got to release me, Major. Release me until I can get McGee. You've got to, Major. How do I know you don't mean to join McGee? I give you my word. All right. Bob, open it up. Yours? Yes, and I won't fail you. I'm so happy to see you. Sam here? Oh, Sammy, you know him. He will not be back for maybe a month, I think. Where's Davy? Davy? I don't know, Jim. He go away yesterday. Oh, he did. Davy. Jim! Open the door. I have not the key. I'll have you out of there in a minute, Davy. What'd you do? Maria! You stay here. See. Si. Glad to see you, David. Where's Wahoo? Wait a minute, David. I'll tell you about Wahoo. Baby. Hello, Sam. Keep him up, Jim. Get back in the room and shut the door, David. I want to stay with you, Jim. Do as I tell you. Get his guns. Haven't you heard that a ranger never gives up his guns? <laughs> I got the drop on you, kid. I see you have, but it ain't gonna do you any good. You mean to say I have to kill you standing there like that? Not till I've killed you. You're all through, Sam. You're all washed up. There ain't no more room for your kind in Texas. I always liked you, Jim. 
You too, Sam. Why'd you kill Wahoo? Killing was too good for him. I'll say for you, you state your case plain. I'll state it plain again. I quit the Ranger Service because I didn't want to go out after you. And Wahoo took my place. But I'm not quitting now. Either you come along with me peaceable or I'm going to kill you like you killed Wahoo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jim, you always was the craziest maverick I ever did know. Hey, you stand there talking about killing me. All I gotta do is press my finger and I blow you right through that door. That don't mean nothing, Sam. As soon as I hear a shot, I'm gonna pull both my guns and start pumping lead into you as fast as I can. Hey, Jim. You remember that gal I took away from you in St. Louis? Huh? Arabella? Yeah, Arabella, remember? <laughs> i tell you what I'll do. Now, Maria here, she's a great gal. She's a good cook. She's on the level, and... You see, me and the boys have been thinking of moseying out California way for a long time. I'll promise you, we'll get out, we'll stay out. I've made a good steak. You'll get your cut as usual. And, uh... I'm leaving Maria behind me. Come on now, what do you say? I say you better put away those guns and come with me. I don't want to kill you! I'll kill you. I'll kill you as sure as a rattletooth poison. Listen, Sam. There might be some chance for you if you let me take you in. Come out of there with your hands up, or I'm coming in after you. Sam, it had to be either you or me, and I guess you lost. Well, I hope maybe you let him in up there. He just got on the wrong train, that's all. Henry B. Jones, whom we affectionately called Wahoo, died bravely. His final home shall be close to us here, 
and to the service that he had come to love. Jones vindicated his errors, and I say that the soil of Texas shall be all the more fertile for the blood he shed to the benefit of those who come after him. The men who have died for Texas have not died in vain. Unsung though their names may be in future years, it shall be known that in the turbulent years of a state's transformation, it was their deeds of individual sacrifice, their acts of dauntless courage, that made possible the changing of a lawless frontier into a civilized land. These are the men called Texas Rangers, molded in the crucible of heroic struggle, guardians of the frontier, makers of the peace. Oh,